Good morning, day 150. There's something so satisfying about those even numbers, right? Um, it is also the last day of May, um, right? No, no, it's not. I think we've got one more day. Um, it is the 30th of May at the time of this recording in the year 2022. Um, and it's a beautiful morning. It's a little cloudy, not over, but a lot of blue sky too. You can see the sun is over there. <sighs> well, I had to read a lot of chapters again of Isaiah this morning, like, um, and it's like heavy stuff. This is, <laughs> it's like all doom and gloom. Um, they're not seeing, uh, in all of these messages, there's not much sunlight peeking through the clouds of the messages that Isaiah is delivering, except what caught my attention, because that's what I was looking for. I'm like, let me find the glimmer, glimmer of something here. And that is, um, in chapter 21, verses 11 and 12, it's a very short little, like there's all these like, Okay, Assyria, here's what's coming your way, and paragraphs and paragraphs. Okay, Egypt, here's what's coming your way. Paragraphs and paragraphs of just doom and gloom. And then Edom gets like two sentences. And it's not doom and gloom, really. It's, um, let me show you the sunrise here real quick. It's pretty high up there. A few minutes late today. But I had to spend a lot of time thinking about this and praying and meditating. Like, this is it's not easy stuff, y'all. Um, anyway, <laughs> this little message from Edom, and then I even looked at it because my version is a little different and it had like some asterisk footnotes. And this message to Edom in most translations says, do. Dunum and Seir is what they, I think those are the words, I don't know if I'm pronouncing them right, from the Hebrew that are actually plays on words of silence and stillness when they're translated that I guess Edom also means. So they're using these other words to refer to Edom in most other translations. Um, and I guess at the time this was all known. So, and then there's, it's a reference to a watchman, like the, like on a tower, like, and somebody's coming up to him and saying, when will it be morning again? Oh, it'll be morning, but don't worry, night's coming again. And if you want to know the answer of when morning is coming again, even after that night period or dark period, come back, come back and ask me again. That's like the whole message. I was like, well, that's a weird little tidbit to have in there and so I really that's where I parked and pondered um because yeah when you see things like that that are just obviously like wait a minute something important is being said here because they're speaking in riddles <laughs> or you know um and so what's what's happening and the word endurance came to mind which uh, is beautiful here, which is super, I think, appropriate based on the last couple of days of thinking about your structure, your faith, how strong it is, where it's firmly standing so that it can stay there. And then the hope on the horizon, like we can stand strong. And today's word or concept is endurance. And part of what helps something have a strong structure and stand firmly in a place when we talk about people is our mind and the ability to endure. And even physical endurance often comes right back to the mind. Um, and we can train in a matter of also training. But it, it involves a lot of in, in the psychological world, there's this concept called um, fading effect bias. And some of us can be more positive leaning and some more negative leaning. And knowing this about yourself, you can, uh, can really help you avoid this thing called complacency, 
which that's, you know, where it just becomes your new normal. And if you're not vigilant about your mental state, your ability to endure is uh, maybe not going to be so good. But endurance is as much a mental or maybe even more of a mental skill and strength than it is physical. But we often have to use our physical beings um, in really good, like a team, <laughs> have to have our mind and body aligned with our eyes on a prize, like a hope on the horizon, that all of what we're doing and suffering and tolerating and enduring is for a purpose. When we lose our sense of purpose and meaning, and there seems to be endless like suffering or hardness, that's when a lot of people, their endurance fails. Um, and there are so many books written on this, like Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, uh, Edith Eager, similar person who's still alive and just amazing. My, one of my like mentors and role models um, who wrote a bo book called Cho The Gift and Choice, uh, The Choice. And both of those people survived Auschwitz. And not only endured, but learned how to come out of that experience and even thrive and live lives that were an example. So how, how does one do this? Another one the, um, that comes to mind that's very famous and a movie was made of him not too long ago called Unbroken. And it's Louis, oh gosh, what is his last name? It's an Italian one, it'll come to me. Um, <laughs> And his ability to endure. He was also a prisoner of war. But there's all kinds of examples. Like even in just the last week, I got a virus. And I was able to endure it. And actually, it was much shorter. And it wasn't as unpleasant a process when I think back historically. Because I've been so much better about my health. My body... I've done some things with my body and my health that helped me not only endure it physically better, but mentally. And I was able to even pull on that and go, oh, the, yeah. I remember a few years ago when I, I wasn't enduring things very well, and I even would use something like a virus to even be worse about my health, where my mentality was like, well, if it stinks, might as well stink, be a little stinkier and do some things that I know make me feel bad because I feel bad anyway, so who cares? <laughs> that is not the mentality <laughs> of somebody with an endurance mentality and one of strength and like, you know, that's, a, that's leaning towards the, I give up, what does it matter? I don't see any meaning in this. <laughs> So I've swung from one extreme to the other, where I lived life that way for the first um, probably 20 years of my adulthood to then swinging and going, wait a minute, maybe this isn't such a good idea. And then slowly now over here and really we're in endurance is one of those things, um, strengths and skills because I, th I think it's really more of a skill than a strength because anybody can do it you just have to be willing willing willingness you know when I look up the definition of endurance there's a lot of willingness in there and also knowing you know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel the hope on the horizon that it all is for a purpose um, even if the purpose itself is endurance and strength and the mental, you know, fortitude that it takes to do that. Um, I was also thinking back to young motherhood when I had one of those moments of like, whoop, oh, this might be part of my problem. Where I, my kids were not very good sleepers. And I was also doing some things health-wise. I was, the way I was enduring was to have, you know, a uh, couple of cocktails in the evening, either a beer or a glass of wine or maybe both. And that was my way to endure, which was actually undermining and undercutting my real 
ability to endure. And part of my mental attitude was, Oh, I'll be glad when this is over. And I could, you know, I kept remembering days pre kids when I was in control and it was just me I had to worry about and kind of longing for and knowing that childhood years are temporary and I'll have it one day again. But I was really kind of, I don't think that was the best thought process <laughs> um, because it kept me focused and made in a negative place of like, oh, like enduring from a negative place. And then one day I just remember I sort of had this like, one, you know, a light bulb moment in a good way. And I also just learned to, whoa, this is just a season. What if we just accepted that we're going to be tired a little bit and we stop like kind of struggling against that mentally and being resentful about it? What if we just let go of that and we just said, this is what, you know, this season of life and mothering is all about. And then the suffering was not that bad. It was just like, okay, I'll drink a little caffeine. I'll, you know, get, find other ways to get energy and sleep while I can. I wish back then I knew what I know now about alcohol and had stopped that silly practice, but I didn't, but I was able to really endure with a renewed mindset that really helped the suffering a lot. I came to the realization that I was creating a lot of my own suffering, basically. And that's what some of us can do when we're, when we got the fading effect bias, but we've got it more negatively trained. Um, and we can retrain it and refocus it and redirect it as positive. And that's what I was able to do in that season of life that really helped a couple of years there you know, I had a really hard couple of years to then it was like, not so hard. It was still hard, but it wasn't as hard. Part of our mental attitude with endurance also makes it better. And there are, you know, you know, I'm sure you can, if we were sitting across or walking and talking now, you would probably be able to throw out five or 10 examples as well. We all have them and and probably examples like mine too, where you might've done it well mentally and where you didn't do it well mentally and where, and how much of a difference, like it really is a mental attitude much more than it is anything else. Um, Cause the physical body can be trained and it can be convinced and even the mind, you know, but we have to give it some success and hope. Like we thrive. As a species, we thrive on positivity. And when hope is gone, that is when people um, crumble under too much endurance. They can only take so much. And many do turn to drugs and alcohol or unhealthy habits or violence. Or, you know, I think that is what is like the little bit of the message that we're getting in there, that's a little bit of a message of hope <laughs> for people um, of faith in such a time where it just seems like hell, it's going to hell in a handbasket and everything like, ah, how as you as if you're in the minority and you're like, how do I still have hope in the faith face of all of this? How do I not become, how does Viktor Frankl learn how to, kind of accept and live in his new reality in Auschwitz while, while mentally inside having hope that's helping him survive versus just going, well, if you can't beat them, join them. You know, that's the other choice that a lot of people can make. That's exactly what Edith Eager, you like, you have choices here. You choose. You're not a victim. Even when you live in an unending period of what seems like darkness and suffering. And it can be so tempting to be like, well, if you can't beat them, join them and then become the thing yeah. and become part of the darkness and part of the problem and, th and then lose that sense of purpose and meaning. Or how do you endure and maybe even accept and like, okay, this is just the way it is for now. And I'm going to try to live with it the best I can and integrate what I can that doesn't violate my choice in my mind and accept, accept and surrender, so surrender, 
often is like, um, like you can surrender to the darkness, but surrendering and staying firm in your hope and your faith, that takes a lot of strength and courage. But it also is accepting the reality of what's happening now and learning how to live with it in harmony as much as you can, but staying strong in your faith. Endurance athletes, I think there was a reason that Paul in the New Testament used endurance sport and running the way that he did for so many analogies. That's what we've got to keep our eyes on the prize and not give up because it's really the hope that helps you have the under the endurance that doesn't crumble, that doesn't fade, that doesn't give up, that doesn't go in the wrong direction. So, and that's where that fit, that strength of your structure and standing firm. And that's where we, you know, when I, that day at the, where I talked about the, you know, you have to be able to have a little bit of flexibility and breathing and be able to interact with your environment. That that actually is part of the strength of a structure. And when things are built too rigidly and too airtight, that actually is a vulnerability and a weakness in that structure. And sometimes as people, it is very tempting to be very rigid with our thoughts and our minds and our judgments and our, this is the way things are. But when we bump up against a reality that's asking us to bend and flex a little, and we don't realize that we've got this choice to stay strong and work with our environment um, and bend with it, but stay strong internally and in thought and in mind and in belief and in hope of it one day being differently. And this is kind of what I was trying to capture the other day. And it's that, that structure and that firmness, but with flexibility and strength that enhance the strength, um, but be, it's combined with positive, um, knowing that there is a positive outcome, like knowing that there is a positive outcome. Hi, good morning. And when we know that there's a, and this is why when we engage in different way of living where we pay attention to how this is happening in our regular lives. And even if you engage in a physical sport, if you're able or physical activity and movement, and you can train yourself to endure how much that can help you in your mental um, strength in all areas of life, um, faith, relationships, because you know it can't, it, everything changes. That is like the way of life. That's what they're, the watchman is saying. Like, oh yeah, darkness is coming again, but morning will come again, the night will come again. Like, things change, nothing stays the same. There's one thing that's constant and unchanging is that things change. And keeping your eyes focused and your heart focused and your mind focused on the positive. <laughs> We've got a lot of fishermen out here on this beautiful, warm um, spring morning. All right. I think I've said enough. I've said it in enough different ways that hopefully it lands and um, helps you think about your own. Um, some of the things that you're doing, are they enhancing your endurance? your mental thought processes, your attitudes, your beliefs, your physical part of your physical self-care, like how are you caring for yourself? Are you are you helping your ability to endure or are you undermining yourself? Um, all very important questions to ask. We are a whole being, mind, body, and spirit. All right, built to endure under the right conditions, but you're the right conditions are your choice. All right. Bye. Rise and shine.